Oh, ladies and gentlemen, our first speaker, Kate Hudson, Director of Cross Watershed Initiatives, River Keeper, will address us first. Thank you. my voice. Um, thank you so much for uh, organizing this really important uh, opportunity to speak, for all of us to speak in support of the river that we all care about so much. I uh, am going to focus my remarks on information, because I think information is key to our making the right decisions about how to take action. And there is much confusion, much, much misinformation, Less, much disinformation concerning this very consequential news. So I want to take a moment to try to get the facts out about who has proposed this, why, and uh, why it is such a concern for all of us. So we can be clear and forceful and speak with much voice about what needs to be done in order to protect our river and our communities. So, what is being proposed? By whom? Uh, what happened is that in January 2016, commercial shipping organizations, including the tug and barge operators, the Hudson River Pilots Association, and American Waterways operators, submitted a written request to the Coast Guard that the number of official anchorage grounds for large commercial vessels in the Hudson River be expanded from the current two in Yonkers and Hyde Park to 43 berths in 10 locations, opening up 2,400 24 acres of new anchorages in the Hudson River in some of the most ecologically sensitive areas of the river. And 42 of those 43 berths would be characterized as long term that vessels could stay at for multiple days. Thus, this is not, as vessel operators have tried to characterize it, nothing new. We've been doing this forever. This would represent a huge increase in the anchoring of commercial vessels in the Hudson between the George Washington Bridge and Albany. Turning our river into a parking lot for large barges and vessels while they wait for dock space. So why did the commercial shipping organizations this request to the Coaster. Until late fall of 2015, northbound tugs and barges frequently anchored off of Port Hewitt, just south of the Roundout Creek. Riverkeeper received many complaints from residents of communities on both sides of the river, Asopus, Port Hewitt, Rhinecliff, and we referred them to Captain Day for Coast Guard, Sector Day. Day ultimately, on the basis of those complaints, notified vessel operators that where they were anchoring was not an authorized, federally designated anchorage ground, and they had to cease using it immediately. In response, the shipping organizations submitted their vastly increased anchorage request to the Coast Guard in January 2016. In their letter, in their January 2016, these commercial shipping organizations made it very clear why they were doing this. They specifically referred to the vast increase in the transport of Bakken crude oil on the Hudson since the beginning of 2012. Uh, essentially, the industry emphasized that trade in crude oil on the Hudson will increase significantly over the next few years with the lifting of the ban on American crude oil. Uh, exports. And the federally designated anchorages are key to supporting that trade. Since that letter was written and submitted to the Coast Guard, uh, the shipping industry has changed their tune a bit and started to talk about safety. But this is very clear from their letter what their purpose is. So why is it that we are faced with all this transport on the Hudson River, which literally did not exist prior to 2011. Fine oil has been coming up the river forever and supplying all of our communities with heating oil and gas. Raw crude had not been coming down the river until 2011. 
2011. What happened? North Dakota, the Bakken shale, and over the next four years, between 2012 and 2016, up to 25% of the fracked crude oil coming out of the Bakken shale fields is going through Albany. 25% a quarter of the entire output of that region. And what doesn't come down on the trains is coming down on vessels and barges. And the permits, and, and in addition to that, this is a fossil fuel commercialization of the Hudson River that we have never seen before. In addition, permits are also being sought to allow the companies loading this oil in the Port of Albany, Global and Buckeye, to load tar sands oil, sinking tar sands oil, on these very same barges. Uh, the, these permits are being fought by Riverkeeper and under some the ports right now. Uh, this oil and the increase that obviously these Anchorage designations would allow to happen massively, exponentially increases the risk of spills in the Hudson of oil. It is the accident waiting to happen. And it is the accident that the river will not be able to recover from. Professional responders to oil spills estimate that a successful recovery to a spill in a tidal river like the Hudson would be able to recover maybe 15 to 20 percent of the oil spill. When it comes to heavy crew, to tar sands, 5 to 10 percent recovery would be a successful spill. The rest will remain a So, why do we need the increase in crude oil shipping that this proposal facilitate and who will benefit? Uh, as I mentioned, the shippers have said, oh no, this is all about safety. Uh, what if, you know, it's foggy or your sights need to be able to stop? This is a problem that doesn't need to be fixed because any time that a commercial vessel wants emergency anchoring privileges, all they have to do is ask the Coast Guard and it will be granted. They also say that the three anchorages in the Kingston Pub between uh, Port Ewan and uh, the Roundout Creek are essential because the upper river should be navigated only during daylight. The barges anchored near Kingston weren't waiting for daylight. They were waiting for dock space in Albany. And loaded barges routinely travel south from the port of Albany at night. <coughs> Don't we need gas and home heating oil? I think we've seen that those products have been shipped from uh, refineries up to Albany for decades. That, but that won't change. That's not the issue. Uh, the barges that have been anchoring in the Hudson since 2012 are carrying crude oil down to refineries in Philadelphia and, uh, and New Jersey. It is more often than not they are anchoring because they're, the loading terminals in Albany are at capacity. It's disingenuous and dishonest to raise the specter of, oh, you're not going to have enough heating oil or gasoline if you don't approve these, uh, these anchorages. We are faced with a situation where um, what was, has been traveling down the Hudson River since 2011 was limited by the capacity of coastal refineries in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Now that the United States has lifted the crude oil ban, industry predicts that we will see enormous increase in volumes transported on the Hudson. That's why they're asking for the anchorages. Now, global market forces and the permits that New York State needs to use are the only limit to how much oil we can see. There are some that claim that uh, these products need to be transported by water because having a uh, large transport of oil will prevent the construction of a pipeline. The pipeline industry says if they have a pipeline, we won't need barges. The rail industry says it's the same as means of transport of all. They're all wrong. Having barges won't prevent pipelines. Having pipelines won't prevent barges. And transport by rail won't prevent either of the others. None of these industries has made an agreement saying if you move the oil, we'll back out of the business. 
and the refiners and owners of the oil say, we use all of the above strategy any way we can get it. So, in light of that, I am going to defer to others in terms of discussing very specific impacts, but I do want to reiterate that the cargo of greatest risk to the Hudson is petroleum. And uh, the risk of a spill, already a serious threat, will rise even further if new anchorages are granted. And what else could we expect if new anchorages are granted? In other parts of the country, crude oil is being stored in vessels until prices rebound. We could become a storage facility, basically, uh, until that happens. Uh, or maybe we will see a request for a proportional increase, if the anchorages are granted, in the Port of Albany to eliminate the gridlock in the port facility uh, and movement of additional vessels. They are already applying to expand the Port of Albany. And as you have mentioned, we have 100,000 residents in the Mid-Hudson Valley that depend on um, their drinking water from the Hudson, uh, which would be put a serious risk in the Tidal River. Uh, if there were still anywhere in the vicinity. And I have to because my boat captain tells me if I leave without mentioning the sturgeon, he will be very upset. <laughs> the sturgeon were here first. Several of the proposed anchorages are areas relied upon by both the Atlantic and Shore Coast sturgeon, both of which are on the endangered species list. The anchors and anchor chains scar and disturb the river bottom where the sturgeon spawn, feed, and rest. And scientists using side scan sonar have been able to document the scarring and the fact that it does not disappear even when the anchorages, the unauthorized anchorages off of Port Ewan were uh, terminated in the fall of 2015. Uh, so we must as part of all of our advocacy, um, insist that research be done to determine whether or not the sturgeon are going to be injured by this anchorage proposal. I want to make one additional point, and then I promise I'll stop. Something that I think um, is not known by a lot of people, and it's not specific to this anchorage proposal. Anchorages proposals generally are not subject to the requirement for a federal environmental review under the National Environmental <laughs> Policy Act. We must insist in our comments to the Coast Guard that a full and comprehensive environmental review comprehensive uh, explanation of the risks involved in this uh, really crazy proposal.